everybody, Josh Jr. here for another in-shop adventure. This one, the basics of rock tumbling and some questions and answers. So here we go. There has been a lot of weird information given out, mainly in social media. And I'm going to narrow that down to Facebook, uh, Reddit, TikTok, and the rock-related forums are do a pretty good job. Um, but there's some really bad information that's been given out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the process and talk about things for a typical batch. Now keep in mind, you have different procedures for agate as you do for petrified wood, as you do for obsidian, and there are a thousand of ways of being able to rock, make a rock shine. And I get that. And I'm not saying that my way here is the best way. But I seem to get pretty acceptable results with what I do. Minus the fingerprints. And it doesn't matter if it's a rock that take a, can take a polish, in my opinion, I'll do my best to get a polish on a rock. Just what I do. Just how I do things. So, we have... And we're not starting off the coarse grit. We're going to use material that has gone through the process of medium grit, I mean of coarse grit, ready for medium grit. And this is agate from the Ochico Mountains of Oregon. So I want this to be left rough. And I want it to have character. So I do not want it to be all nice, nice and smooth like this obsidian is with no flaws in it. I'm not doing that. I'll even throw a piece of Montana moss in it. And another piece. So what I'm doing is I'm filling the barrels up. I pre-mark this mark here. It's a, I have to redo it every time if you want to do this method. That's approximately just over two-thirds but below three-quarters of the way full. So I'm going to come up almost to that. There we go. And we'll do the same thing over this next one. Now that line there is exactly three quarters of the way full, but I don't want it that full. where I want it. Right there. Good enough. I've seen some things online that are just astounding and have seen so many people get frustrated. So, again, that's why we're doing this. Now, this is 12220 grit. At this stage, for this cycle here, you could use 12220 which is a blended of the two, or you could use graded grit of 120 or graded grit of 220. You, if you go that route, need to take good notes. You see how dirty this book is? It's because my grubby hands are over it a lot from prior note taking. I mean, back in, it's got all kinds of cool stuff in there. 
this is my rock tumbling brain because I tumble such a wide variety of things and things have different recipes to it this is my brain so what we're going to do is one third one quarter cup that's only one third cups so I filled up to the line approximately one quarter cup of 120-220 and again approximately one quarter cup of 120-220 there we go that's that easy now I personally like adding some additive the additive I add is this white stuff for those that know you know you can use anything that you think will help carry the grit that could be <clears throat> borax it could be soap that could be um, corn syrup which is a mess I mean there's all kinds of ways people think they want to do it so if you want to try one of those methods try it take good notes when you do along with before and after pictures to include the slurry afterwards water let's hope I don't overfill it because that sucks when you overfill it that's all the water I want maybe just a tad bit more because it's starting to settle because of the grit not too much more there we go that's all the water I think I wanted that one and I'll go back and probably add just a titch more to it am I being picky with the water yeah I am because if you overfill it it reduces tumbling action if you underfill it you'll have a thick too thick slurry of and mud in there there you go put your lids on it and this is how I, this is how I store my lids just, just a little weird quirky thing how I do things but slap your lid on it tighten it down Put it on the tumbler and let it roll for however long it needs to be on a Harbor Freight dual rotary drum tumbler mine is between seven and ten days depending which one I put it on because every one rolls at a different speed the faster ones a shorter period of time the slower ones a longer period of time no big deal but again you see this 2a that's for tumbler number two again that's what these notes are for because I know how fast this one takes and how many days it's going to be and probably it's going to be eight days and this one's going to be done okay questions if you have questions put them in the comments below I may answer them I may not it is as simple as we get so let's go on to the next step of this video questions and answers as I put these on now these are tough to do some people have a real difficult time doing it which sometimes I do as well but see it's on there you put your lid on the questions that I'm going to be using are all selected from different Facebook groups and then make sure that's seated down all the way and I'm not picking on the people who asked the questions because some of them are some legitimate questions I'm also going to show you some very absurd things that's happened that people have received some very bad advice on. And I'll mix those. I think I only have two of them in right now. But I have some questions. You can use a rubber mallet on this too. Here we go. Those are ready to roll okay question and answers and then we'll do a couple other things associated with stuff here in the shop here on the screen you see question 
After seeing the beautiful shine on some of your rocks after tumbling, it is obvious I am not using the best grit. Can you please tell me the different grits to use in steps one through four for the best shine? I clean everything really well between batches. I even run each step longer than needed. And I did add a borax cycle at the end. They still don't shine and, I, and like what I'm seeing on the site. Thank you for your advice. This is a very common thing. What we need to know though is first what equipment are you rolling? Are you using a rotary tumbler? Which one are you using? Are you using a National Geographic? Are you using a Vivor? Are you using Harbor Freight? Are you using a Loratone? Are you using we gotta know which way which one you're using? Secondly, what type of rocks are you rolling? Are you rolling agate and trying to achieve a shine? Are you rolling petrified wood? Are you rolling obsidian? Are you rolling jasper? Are you rolling chert? Are you rolling... What are you doing? Do you got to tell us what's going on? Third, tell us the source of the grit and polish you're using. Are you using the stuff that came from National Geographic if you're using a geographic tumbler or Nat Geo? If that's the case, throw away the polish. You think I'm joking? Throw away the Nat Geo polish and go get some else. Well, where do you get it from? Kingsley North. Fantastic source for a grit and polish. The Rock Shed. That's where I get mine at currently on my current batches. Johnson Brothers Lapidary. They've got great deals going on and they have sometimes free shipping, especially on their larger bulk orders. And there's countless other sites too and places. And you might be able to get it from your local mom and pop shop, rock shop there, wherever you're at. I know the ones around my area here in, in Oregon, most of them sell it. So consider looking at your local rock shop. Also, there's a new one out there is Highland Park. And I have recently ordered a bunch of theirs and it's sitting in inventory. And once I use up all of my stuff that I purchased from the rock shed, I'm going to convert over for at least uh, my 6090 coarse grit and to my... Uh, 120, 220 from them, from Highland Park. And I'll let you guys know what I think of it. The other part of this is um, additives. Are you adding additives? Well, I add white stuff. Most of you know what that is. For pre-polish, the 500 grit, and polish, are you adding media? This is my media mix. This is ceramic mixed with small rocks and I don't even care if it's good cleaned out this is what I do this is how I I put this in with my pre-polish and polish I have not added anything new after three years of doing this now they're getting small so it's getting time to replace them and I've got a bag of the smalls that I'm going to start introducing into this as these fall through the cracks of the colander they're no good so I have a self, kind of a self-cleaning system on these, and if they get too small and they go through the crack, the, the slots in my strainer, colander, strainer, whatever you call it, then they're garbage. They're done. They're used up. Another thing is water. Really not so much important with agate. Uh, but when it comes to obsidian, it's very important with your water quality. Is there additives? Is there additives? Is there is your water too hard? Is your water too soft? That's really emphasized in obsidian and not so much in agates and jasper and other types of things like that. The last one, and this is the biggest variable, it's you. How patient are you? Are you able to take good notes and keep track of it? Are you willing to try new things as an experiment? Are you willing to take some of these ones here that's been through coarse grit and maybe run them at 220 created grit to see if you get the polish that you or get the results you want? Or are you going to run it just at the 120 graded grit at it? Or are you going to do what everybody else does and do the 120 220 blend non graded? 
what are you going to do? Are you going to run at 120 and then again and roll it at the 220 graded? What are you going to do? Your patience level. This takes time. I love the rock tumbling because I spend a short period of time getting things pre prepared, throw it in the tumbler, and I don't have to look at them for five to seven, maybe eight or nine days. Perfect for me. I absolutely love it. It doesn't require hours of daily attention. It's fantastic for me. So there are so many variables out there on trying to get your rocks to polish. So when you're asking a question, let the readers know what equipment you have, what other rocks you're rolling, what's the source of your grit and polish, what additives are you using. Again, if you're trying to roll obsidian, is there issues with your water? Is it a dirty city water? Is it a hard water with a lots, or is it water with lots of alkaline in it from, from a well? And be honest about your level of patience. Are you a patient person or are you impatient? Are you able to take good notes and follow instructions and try new things? All of those affects the results. Okay, the next question is revolves around rocks collected from the ocean, like these. These were collected in near the area of Brookings, Oregon. And here's the question on the screen for you. I am getting ready to do my first tumbling. I have a batch of jasper that is already rounded from the ocean. I was thinking of using the smallest grit for the first tumble, then do pre-polish grit and then do final polishing. Do you think I could skip the smallest grit and just go to pre-polish? Should, should I still put in smaller rocks even if they are rough? And what about adding smooth quartz? Thanks for any, any help. Well, first and foremost, you need to roll everything, at least in coarse grit, first. Because that will make it so you can get results like this. You won't get off through rid of all the cracks and flaws, but you're going to reduce them a, mount, a lot. So you need to roll them first in coarse grit. I don't care if these are river tumbled, uh, tumbled from the ocean. I don't really care. I roll everything first in coarse grit. Then I go through the normal process. Medium grit, the 120-220, pre-polish and polish. Sometimes coarse grit requires two times, even if it's already shaped by the ocean. So, do all the cycles, do all the grit levels, and sometimes it may require even more than one time, especially in the coarse grit. Uh, should I still put in smaller rocks? Since that's part of my media, What does that say? And then the west, what about adding smooth quartz? Um, you can expect the quartz to get a little beat up. If you expect it to get a little beat up, then fine, no issues. Um, but with the quartz, it will probably get bruised up pretty hard and possibly even cracked. So this is a yet yeah, kind of a s typical question I see a lot of, um, and go from there. This question I could not believe. So I put a bottle of mineral oil out. This is one of the types I use for my rock cutting. Some people say, oh no, that won't work, and blah, blah, blah. I don't care. You use what you use. I use what I use. I don't have any issues using... An animal care mineral oil light. If people don't like it, tough. Sorry, John, that's what I use. I might try yours later. Question on the screen When you are tumbling your rocks, how much mineral oil do you use? What the heck? Where do people get the idea that you tumble your rocks using mineral oil? because it comes out shiny? Excuse me. Let's get rid of this. I'm tired of looking at that. No mineral oil on there. I wish I had a rag up here. I do. 
it's a dirty rag, but that's fine. It'll serve the purpose. So let's rub it. I'm going to rub all the mineral oil off. Wait, it's still shiny. Huh, let's rub it some more. Wait, got still a polish on there. Well, how do you do that? For some reason, it's a thing that people like to put manure oil on the rocks. There's a thing out there that people seem to believe that you roll your rocks in mineral oil to get, it to get them to shine. Wives' tale. Enough said. If you go on my Facebook group, uh, Rock Counting and Polishing, and you start talking about polishing your rocks with mineral oil as a permanent solution, I just expect the post to get deleted. Uh, I don't I don't agree with that whatsoever. I can understand using mineral oil to look at a rock to bring out its characteristics so you can see how to cut it so you can see the lines. You could use mineral oil or water but since if you're cutting it in a slab saw with mineral oil already go ahead and dunk it in some mineral oil so you can take a look at it so you can understand how to orient your rock in the slab saw. For example if I wanted to orient this backside differently, glue this onto a, onto, onto a board, and I wanted to have that board at an angle, I could dunk this into mineral oil already because it's going to be in mineral oil to begin with, so I could see the coloring and patterns better, and then I could make a determination on how I want it angled in the saw. That's a good use for mineral oil for a polish so you can see the detail for your next process that you're going to do mainly cutting. Okay, yeah, you see median, you see this is pre-polish powder. That's 500 grit aluminum oxide. That's what I use. Let me throw a picture up here. The person was confused as to why all the media was sticking to the side of their tumbler not the media, all the polish was sticking to the side of their tumbler. They couldn't understand why. How many things do, wrong do you see here? First and foremost, it's obvious. No water. Second thing, the barrel is nowhere near full enough. Here's a hint. If you cannot fill your barrel to at least two-thirds of the way full. Don't waste your time. Wait until you get more rocks. Go find some. And go from there. Next thing is, is this a personal preference? It's got plastic pellets in it. I don't like plastic pellets. Um, I don't like adding more microplastics to the environment. I mean, yes, we use everything around here as plastic. I mean, it's pretty sickening how much plastic we use, even containers, buckets. I mean, everything we use, plastic. This camera, the phone, not plastic. I just don't like, if I can not use it, I will try not to use it. But it's impossible in today's society. But I prefer to use ceramic. Plus, it carries forward with the grit from, from pre-polish to polish in my process. So there you go, there is something that I've seen on Facebook that made just me shake my head. Okay, here's another question, and I've already ad addressed this, but I'll still uh, answer the question directly. Okay, this is a question for all of you, for, for y'all, that use tile spacers as fillers in your tumblers. Sorry, y'all, I'm not from Texas, so y'all just don't work with me. Do you... Why'd they not say, do y'all, do you use flexible ones or the rigid ones? I don't have any of the flexible ones. Think of the T-shaped or cross-shaped tile spacers. That's probably what they're talking about. Or do you use the rigid ones? Well, I'm assuming that they're talking about something like this. It's obvious what I use, and I use it because of its simplicity, easy to clean, and the fantastic results I can get. That's pretty much that in a nutshell. That is actually a very good question. There is a lot of information out there, people using spacers as fillers. Uh, there's also another option for fillers. So let's slide these aside.
So we've already looked at these enough. If you're looking for filler for volume, let's just do this here. These are rocks I've previously tumbled. They've gone in through uh, 6090. And what I'll do with these, I will add them in with these barrels to fill the volume back up to the level I want. So like this one here, I'll use that one. 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 I'll use those right down here at the bottom. So I would use those to add into this stuff that I'm already tumbling. And that is just filler stuff. And as you can tell, I've actually worked it before because there's a cutoff. So there's nothing wrong with doing a batch of rocks and setting it aside. Say for 60, 90 gear, especially. And setting it aside. That way, you've got filler material. Just something that I do. What do you do for filler material? I'm not sure what other people do. So this is my method, and it seems to work pretty good. Let me know. Put in the comments below. Tell me what you guys do for filler material for your uh, rocks. Do you add more media, or do you add more rocks, or even a combination of more rocks and media? I want to know. Well, there's some questions and answers. Or answers to some questions that are somewhat common on social media, especially Facebook. There's all kinds of people out there who's struggling with polishing rocks, and I understand that. The rock hunting community and the lapidary community is a group of great people. I'm probably not included in that statement. I, I'm pretty harsh, I'm pretty direct, and people don't understand that. That's how I am. I am direct, forward, in your face. Um, just my nature. I'm not going to change. I don't soften things up because <laughs> somebody thinks they need to have it spoken to them in a different way. I call it how I see it. Probably why my channel here is not a channel like some of the other more popular rock hounds out there because I am blatantly to the point and straightforward and I don't care. I'm doing this for fun. This is primarily a form of entertainment for me. And reading your guys' comments and deleting the ones that's make me laugh because they're just absurd. I try to delete them before other people can see them, especially those rude ones. I understand that there are all kinds of ways of doing this. Making rocks shine. There is not one solution for all these types that's in front of you here. You got the Jasper, you got the Quartzite, you got Petrified Wood. Oh, I didn't throw a chunk of agate on there. I could have thrown it chunk of uh, carnelian on there so I've got off in the cupboard over here and then there's the obsidian which is my specialty but it's the thorn in everybody's side or not everybody's a lot of people's side I'm happy to see a lot of people getting it figured out how to polish it with their equipment with their water using their grit and their additives and their personality um, Sometimes I wish I could help people more, but when you have five, six variables to a process, it is so difficult to give somebody strong advice on which direction to go without knowing everything associated with one of those variables. Um, I wish there was an easy, easy solution. Some people should just stick with agate and jasper and chert and things like that because it's so easy to polish. Quartzite. This is the easiest material that you can get to polish. And it turns out great, and kids love it because it feels so good in your hand. This stuff is just fantastic. And who cares if there's a crack in it? Because there's no value in this stuff other than what you like to do. Some people don't like the petrified wood that's fully polished. Some of it like to see it rough with just the polished face, which that's not a tumbling process. I might do a video on that later in the future. So, 
and this is a unique piece because you have the Jasper which came from think think Blue Mountain but you got the host material still attached to it and is able to get the host material to polish and then you have some that just don't take a polish as well no matter what you do there's some rocks that just will not take a polish most of the time I find those in the green shades a lot of the greens so you know if I come across on social media as being abrupt and not giving you a, a straight answer and, and asking you too many questions and things like that, and there's a reason for it. So I'm going to let you guys go. It's been fun. I'm going to keep looking for questions on social media. And if you have a question that you would like me to answer in a future video, even if you know what the answer is, or you think you know what the answer is, but you'd like to know what my answer would be, ask it, and I'll hang on to it, and whenever I do another question and answer type video, I'll include it. So just remember, everyone's life's an adventure. Then there's mine here in the shop doing questions and answers and showing you the basics of rolling some rocks. This is the Adventures of Jaws Jr. Wait. People say, I, di I digress. Yeah, part of my personality. People say, Jaws, you never go through the entire process on the video. Well, there's the results of what's going to happen with those barrels today. That's what's going to look like. See? That's what's going to look like. There you go. This is Adventures of Josh Jr. Have a good one, everybody. See ya!